Hi, welcome to another video of Yocto tutorial series. In this video, we are going to learn about the kernel configuration and there would be a series of kernel configuration videos. So in this video, we are going to learn about the menu config. What is menu config? So before we learn about the menu config, uh, I would like to tell you that uh, before watching this video, you should need to know what is a kernel. Uh, I hope you all are working on Yocto and you all know a little bit about the kernel but for short I would say that the kernel is the bridge between the software and the hardware so the application that we write and that we can access using the user space but it need to access some memory and it need to access some hardware so the kernel is the bridge between that application and the hardware so it provides the user space some mechanism or some APIs through which we can access the hardware for example GPIOs, R2C, uh, SPI, memory and so on. So this is the short introduction of kernel but anyhow there is more than that but in this uh, series we are only going to touch about the device drivers. So in this video, first of all, we are going to learn about how to access the menu config and what is menu config, then about the interface between the menu config, what is the menu config interface and some basic configuration and then uh, we will also we will also uh, build the kernel with our configuration and at the end we will test that. So first of all, before we go to menu config I would like to show you something and uh, I would like to show you the current uh, configuration of the Beagle 1 Black and uh, uh, in this ex in this video I am taking a GPIO as an example and for that first of all I would like to show you that there is no GPIO access or no GPIO sysfs interface in the current image that we have so let us see first of all that so right now we are inside the Beagle One Black and if we go to uh, CD Sys class and here if we see if you see that in class we have some devices for example but here GPIO is missing so in this tutorial we are going to activate or we are going to enable the GPIO access for SysFS so this is our task to do for this video before we do that there is a thing that I have did with my local.conf if I go to local.conf so I am going to tell you I am going to show you how to access the menu config so if you run the that command an other window will open and there you will have a menu config option but if you do if you add this option to your local.com and save and then if you will do the menu config the menu config will appear on the same terminal on which you have executed the menu config command so I will show you in a while but before you write this in local.conf you have to install the menu config for that you have to execute sudo apt this is this you have to execute on the terminal sudo apt install screen and then enter and put your password and so on so this is what you have to do before that so now let us begin and let me power off this first of all and let us begin with the menu config so here I am again in my build environment the command first of all I am going to make this little bit bigger terminal okay the command is bitpake minus c menu config and then I am to so you have to provide the, the recipe for the Linux kernel is Linux dash Yocto but they also have uh, alternate names like virtual slash kernel so we are going to use that because that chooses the latest one automatically if there are multiple kernel available so how this virtual dot kernel works this is a 
alternate name or alias for the kernel for that please watch my video on provides and r provides so let us go with virtual kernel and now let us see what happens so it is running uh, okay yeah I spell it wrong so virtual kernel so so here you can see that we have access the menu config so our task is to enable the GPIO for CSFS so here you can see it is not uh, very much uh, good but yeah with this left and right arrow you can navigate these options exit help and so on and top and bottom you can navigate the the menu so let us go first of all to journal uh, sorry yeah journal and then here first of all we have to enable something I think we have to disable something yes so expert user yeah we have to enable this I guess or oh, no we have to disable this so to disable we need to press N so now it is disabled to enable we can press Y and if you want to compile it as a module we can press M but here is no option for M it is yes or no so right now we are doing it no and then we will save and we will exit exit is exit doesn't mean that we are exiting the menu config it means that we are going one step back we went one step back and then we are going to device drivers because that we want to do and then device driver we will go to here GPIO support and in GPIO support you can see that uh, okay right now we don't have it so let me go back once again and check the journal setup yes and we have to enable it I guess let me check it once again exit device drivers GPIO yes you see now here we have this SFS option and now we can do it as Y and it is enabled now we have to do it save ok and then exit and exit again and exit again so now the configuration is saved now what we have to do is we have to build the image once again so let us build bit bake core image full command line so let the image build it will take a while because uh, we will be compiling the kernel once again so it will take a while so the image has been built successfully and uh, now it's time to check uh, whether we have this GPIO or not so let me connect the BeagleBone Black and I will be back so now I have connected the BeagleBone Black and uh, now let us go to sysfs sys class and ls so this time you can see that we have a an extra folder for gpio so it means that we have activated the gpio sysfs uh, sysfs interface uh, to activate and deactivate or how to use the gpio is not the scope of this video so yeah so we have uh, somehow did the kernel configuration but the point is that this configuration is not the permanent it means that if you run like a clean as state for the kernel all the configuration will be removed how to keep those configurations permanently or how to keep our custom configurations permanently for that please watch my next video and in next video I will explain that how to save them permanently and how to use them so I hope you like this video uh, Please like and subscribe my channel and thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.